It's the only vessel that we can see here, and it's uh, August 2020. And I'm showing you the hole where this uh, GMI 10 was. And inside is uh, a Blue Sky Duo um, solar controller. And what this is all about is we're putting a, <clears throat> excuse me, we're putting a remote control for it in. And uh, it's a panel, something like the Link 2000 here. And um, we'll be able to control it from here instead of going, as you can see the seat, that has to go closed. Sorry about that. I don't have a light. I don't have too many hands. <laughs> Not enough hands. So, and then we go in here where the solar controller is. We've been messing around in here, so it's a little bit of disarray. There's a solar controller up there, and there's a red switch down here we have, you know, so we can shut it off and on easily enough. But it's not all that easy. So, it's a Xandrex 2000 uh, charger inverter. And that we use, well, I don't need to do that right now, for uh, charging the batteries at the dock. And then we use the Link 2000, it controls it. And uh, part of it is that we now have wet cell batteries, which is another story. And we have to equalize them. So we can do it, of course, with the Zantrak, but we're not at the dock probably half the year. Or we're out at anchor. So using this, this remote, we can control a solar controller and we can equalize the batteries. And we can turn it on and off and all kinds of stuff right here. And it also gives us a good readout of all the, uh, the house batteries. And I uh, have to do a rewire of the shunt. I think I wired it wrong originally. But it still is kind of accurate over here. Our last batteries were Mastervolt um, AGMs and they lasted a six and a half years. So we had to do something right. And anyways, this is the uh, new location of the... Uh, let me turn on the... Okay. Back. And this is a new... Lake. This is a GMI-10. Garmin... Uh, 10 and right now it's on. I don't know what it's uh, running. There's a temperature, no apparent wind, and they get all kinds of custom gauges. This will, uh, in a second, should take a reading. Well, there's a temperature at 79, barometer up just past the wind. So there's wind, four knots coming directly on the bow right now. Nope, on the stern, excuse me. <laughs> anyway. Uh, you can see that the rest of stuff. Um, there's some hard drives and uh, a modem and you know speaker. This we have a Vesper AIS. It's a uh, 8000, and it has uh, an app which is also an anchor alarm app, and we use it that a lot. And this we put in an extra loud anchor alarm siren and this is the original part that came with it and there's the button to turn it on and off and you can use it for other functions you can program it so we use it for the anchor alarm anyways uh the 802 icom speaker mic dhf air conditioning we don't have it on right now and that's the uh wind generator amp thing which i should have used a 15 but i got a 30 and probably never get up to 30 amps at a time it would be easier to read but a 15 but here's the pacto modem on and on don't want to get too off topic but uh if you want so anyway we needed a whole song we put it out on the internet i mean <laughs> on the vhf for that uh and lo and behold over here on the gunnel we came back from an errand and was sitting a hole saw so it was like Oh my God, who left that? Great. And then we went to use it, and it has a half inch shank on it. So it was like, we have a 30 quarter inch drill. Gosh darn. All right, so we went up, we were at, we were, we went back on uh, VHF and talked to a guy over on uh, uh, Nuevo Viarda, which is across a little bay here. Man, he had a half inch drill. Well, he was originally going to let us use the hole saw, but we, we found one on a gunnel. So then we went, so we walked up by uh, Starbucks up here, and then we said, oh, there was Neil. Neil was a uh, charge, no, he's uh, 
updating his phone and using the Wi-Fi up there. And he goes, we talked to him. He says, oh, yeah, I dropped off the hole saw, and I have a half-inch drill. And Neil's about six boats down from this one on uh, Isis, which is, uh, I think, an 82 Freeport like ours. I don't know Freeport. Ours is a 78. And uh, anyway, he let us this nice Dewalt half-inch drill. And, you know, I've used them before. you got to love them. They're great drill and cordless deal. And I put the... Uh, can't see it without the flash. I can put the... What would you call it? The clutch turned it way down so that when uh, we drilled this hole, you know, it, it wouldn't rip the drill out of your hand of a bind. It just went click, click, click. So it worked pretty good. It took a while to drill a hole. Then I had to sand it and rasp it, sand it, blah, blah, blah. Anyways, it all come out pretty good. Thanks to Neil. And I got to return his stuff, of course. And um, so that's about it. I can think of anything. Oh, yeah. The other thing is that this works without turning on sharp plotter. So like I said, I just, I did that. Um, without having to go out and turn chart plotter on. Now, if you want one or two of the chart plotter, we had to get a new one. Ours died. So we got a new one last year anyway. So if you go out and turn the chart plotter on, you could actually um, take this oops, light show, take this table and put it up and sit in here. We've done it. And use the Garmin network with the app. We have a Samsung tablet. And with the app, you can sit here or wherever you want, anywhere in the boat or on the boat, and control all the chart plotter. You control, you get radar and auto, you can autopilot, change course, do whatever you want right on the app. So it's kind of it eliminates the need for a for another chart plotter in the boat. Old school type, you have to put another one in here for a for a repeater, but not anymore with that. So it's that's pretty cool. Um, but this we use a lot at anchor. This this little deal here, we just want to see what's raining out and blowing, and how where you know where the wind's direction is coming from, and how many knots, and blah blah blah. So it, it's pretty nice. Anyway, now you can see on the side.